Well, my big worry now is that even though Trump did not invent post-truth uh, America, uh, he has certainly given uh, a lot of uh, quarter to, uh, to the way in which uh, truth, expertise, evidence, uh, argument on the basis of facts uh, play a role in public policy in the United States. And his use of social media is not accidental because social media itself seems to traffic especially in, uh, in, in different groups that uh, basically want to hear people of like opinion and, uh, and just confirm each other's biases from the start, uh, including biases that are often opposed to facts and, and truth and a commitment to, uh, to, to looking at the evidence and thinking about it seriously. Um, there's no such thing as alternative truth. You know, there's uh, uh, the things we're finding more about and that we don't fully understand. But many things have reached a level in human society where they're pretty well understood. You know, we know we know if you drop an apple, as Isaac Newton found, it falls and hits the ground. And to have an alternative truth about that is ridiculous. And some of the alternative truths are, are in these areas where it's simply ridiculous. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, scientific knowledge is not absolute in many areas. The frontiers continue to expand uh, and debate uh, and uh, uh, discourse uh, are entirely appropriate and they're part of a university's business. The, the, the kind of uh, attack on the university, not just as an institution, but also as a set of ideas about what truth means, how you uh, develop knowledge, how you actually have uh, knowledge that can be considered authoritative, uh, is, is a huge challenge. Uh, and it's a challenge uh, that I think is only going to get more difficult uh, in the years ahead. The politics uh, of the era in student terms uh, are really exciting. Uh, that there's more um, discourse, uh, indeed protest, on university campuses around the world uh, than there has been uh, at any time uh, since the 60s when the Vietnam War was at its height. Uh, young people are desperately concerned uh, to make the world a better place and they're standing up on university campuses and saying so. You know, this relates to environment, it relates to fairness, it relates to inclusive behaviour and this all bodes very well for the future. Uh, you know, at Berkeley, uh, we had uh, a speaker come who uh, was a right-wing provocateur, and I was committed to having him have the opportunity to speak. The event didn't take place uh, because it was closed down by protesters, and uh, there was massive violence and images of fires raging and, uh, and, and glass-breaking doors and the like being sent around the world. But uh, the next morning, we woke up to a tweet by Trump uh, threatening the cessation of federal funding. Uh, and I worried that that was a kind of illustration of a generalized antipathy uh, to research, uh, to the things that we do in universities, and the kind of claim we have on, uh, on, on, on generating uh, the best of American life, both in the economy, but also in our society and our culture. Well, I'm, I'm an optimist. I think the future looks bright. The problems that we're bogged down with now are really problems of our own doing. We have national leadership, which is regrettable, and they'll serve their terms and disappear. But the young people that are going into universities are so bright, so enthusiastic, that I, I sense that the best thing we could do is to foster their prospects and get out of their way.